Hey guys, and welcome back to Temple Talk number three. We're here again to shed some positivity and light for you guys. It's the ultimate truth. It's all we speak. <sighs> it is, and it's pretty <laughs> depressing sometimes, but we like being the bearer of bad news, actually, to be honest. It has, it has its cons it and pros. So. And uh, today's topic, my friend, we're going to talk about, I guess, what is achievable natty versus what is unrealistic and perhaps why people lie about it, why people try and cheat the system. And I think that's a pretty hot topic at the moment. It is a pretty big topic, bro, and it's everywhere. It is everywhere. The, the, the amount of knowledge that people have and how much steroids are actually in the world is wild. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a large part due to being naive. Okay, you've probably watched your favorite wrestlers growing up thinking they're all natural and they can achieve all these great physiques and be these fucking celebrities celebrities exactly <laughs> like your, your superhero movies <laughs> yeah. and then you've got obviously the athletes you look up to that lie to you about it now this isn't just powerlifting and strength sports let's think about the olympic games okay now the premise is you're competing to be the best in the world right yeah you're gonna do whatever it takes sometimes whatever it takes you'll bend any rule find any loophole manipulate the system and cheat the system sometimes to win. Some people do that. And it's dead right. And I think a big part that people are definitely not uh, noticing or remembering is that uh, playing sports is a job. It is. It is a job. It is how you earn your income. You have to, it's a little bit different to laboring all day on a work site or something like that, but you are pushing your body to the extreme so that you can perform in the best atmosphere in the best way you can for money, okay? What would you do at work to improve your work and make it easier? Exactly. Now, I understand things like the Olympic Games, right? I don't think, I don't look down on these people for taking PEDs as much as I would in the strength world. Now, why is that? Well, there's not really any other options for Olympians, okay? When you come to powerlifting, there are choices you can make. You've got tested divisions for people who are supposedly natural and you've got divisions for people who don't want to be tested for obvious fucking reasons. Same with bodybuilding. Same with bodybuilding, probably the same strong men as well. Mm. Um, you know, your people are making these conscious decisions to cheat the system. There's no honor in cheating another man out of a competition where it's meant to be the better man wins or the better woman wins. It's not, it's not happening to do. It's not, that's not at all, man. It's fucking rubbish that people do it at all. Yeah, and it's probably largely due to their ego. You know, I, I know personally some people local to here that are doing this exact fucking thing, and it's appalling. Um, but they obviously know they can't compete with their best lifters, so they go to a smaller federation that has a tested division, break these records that haven't really been set properly. There's no competition there at all and they walk around like they're the strongest person in town. <laughs> that is... Embarrassing. Pathetic. Okay, <laughs> now, let's maybe delve into what is achievable. What do you think? Yeah. Well, what sort, of, what sort of level of strength do you think the general person can attain naturally? Let's say a 90 kilogram male, average build, who wants to go to the gym and is consistent, puts in four days a week consistently, for let's say two or three years. Now what sort of numbers do you think are achievable? Bro, I'm looking around a 500 to 600 kilo total tops. And that's a naturally strong person. Yeah. That is a naturally yeah. strong person. That is someone who has the genetic output to move weight. Yeah. Okay, and that is a big part of it as well. Yeah. But you, the weights you're seeing some of these guys that claim they're natural and they're doing, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> it is mental. It's now I would say there's maybe maybe some leeway. I would say I would argue that perhaps I would say 90 kilogram guy. I can see them maybe squatting 300 in sleeves, deadlifting 300. Yeah, because these days people manipulate the leverages, they manipulate the barbell. You get some guys that aren't really strong deadlifting big numbers, and you look at their squat and they can they're getting folded by half. Of that. You know, it's yeah. it's a clear representation of their manoeuvring and, and managing to manipulate the leverages and the equipment to achieve you know, a big deadlift, okay? But I wouldn't say they're the epitome of strength. And, you know, again, naturally on bench press, you know, 90 kilo guy, I can't see 
someone benching much more than 180. For most people, they're obviously going to be outliers, but the top end, yeah. you know, that little percentage, that little tiny group at the top, 180 is a big bench, double body weight bench, bro. It's massive. That's a big bench. It's a big bench. 200 plus is a massive bench. It is a huge is. bench. And anyone that's close to that, their body weight's probably close to that as well, exactly. if they are doing it naturally. It's, <laughs> and it's a very minute amount of people that could possibly manage that. But then you've got these guys, you know, that are 90 kilos, natty, natty, mm. um, you know, squatting 350, 360, benching 220, 240, and they're lifting nearly 400 kilos. You got to kind of totaling, you know, 850 to 1,000. You got to, you got to <laughs> scratch your head a little bit and go, come on, like maybe there's something to this. Because I think one of the biggest things that I like to point out would be that you've got the untested division, meaning there are some monsters. Let's talk about super heavyweights for a moment. Monsters. Oh, yeah, coming for the big boys, aren't right? Monsters, all right? <laughs> Who are not afraid to put things in their body to get stronger. They are walking science experiments, some of these gentlemen. Okay, and they are fucking strong. Mm. Okay, they're wearing knee wraps. They're experienced fucking veterans that have been doing this for years. Yeah. And you go to the IPF, and you've got some guys very close to the ballpark, even stronger than some of these guys, mm. taking up probably some of the top six spots in the world of totals that are apparently lifetime natural wearing knee sleeves. You can't sit here and tell me that that's a thing. You can't. Like, you've got to look back in some of the history of the IPF a few years ago, I think. One of the bigger lifters from Canada got done. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and then what happened after that? A lot of the golden boys got a little bit frightened, I think, and all of a sudden, they weren't capable of lifting even 75% of what they were. Yeah, I think I, I think one of them ended up opening 20 kilos less than what his opener was meant to be and missed it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because and he was one of the best lifters in the world. Like one of the best <laughs> in the world. That doesn't happen, and it wasn't a coincidence that it happened just after Old Mate got done, because I think yeah. it kind of put the fear in them a little bit. It does, it does. And, and it's not like... Look, from the start, I think we've both been a bit like this, bro, where we were like, if we're going to get on, we're going to be straight up and honest about it to people. And I tell you what, the, res the, the way people receive that is actually really good. They appreciate the honesty. Yeah. The stigma around steroids has come from these fucking losers who claim they're natural to hold on to sponsors, to hold on to a bit of fame and hold that Natty King presence and compete in these comps where they are the big fish, you know? Just, and, and it throws the rest of the world out, out, out of a loop because you get an unrealistic you expectation you of what this is. There's still people now who think that jabbing steroids in your leg and sitting on the couch gains you muscle mass. There are, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> taking, taking one of these compounds or supplements is no surefire way to be strong. It, there no. is a lot more to it than that. We've met people who are on more than us, us. Easily. Easily. Way more. No, we, I wouldn't say we run a lot. Not, not at all. Not at all. And these guys are doubling, tripling what we're doing and nothing. They don't look like they even lift. They don't even look jacked. <laughs> so there is a large part of this that is genetics. You have to understand mm. that genetics, hard work, discipline, all these things play into it, but genetics are a huge part and you know, that's something that can't be neglected. And I think mm. one more thing I want to talk about is that a lot of the time people ask us what we run. Okay, now we just stated we don't run a lot. No. And that's kind of as far as we will go openly, okay? Because one, not necessarily legal to be doing these things. Talking about it is okay. So it's always hypothetical, yeah. of course. Of course. Um, but also, we work with a team of lifters, right? Who come to us, they pay us for a service. We have skills, we have knowledge, okay? Now that is reserved for our crew, for our team. Okay, not everything we do can be free. We give a lot of free information, a lot of free content because we love to help you guys. But also that is something that is reserved for our clients. And also, it would be kind of irresponsible for me to spurt my cycle because that could be good for me, but that could be fucking dangerous for you. Yeah. yeah and that's negligence. So yeah. we can't be doing this. So don't think that we're not wanting to answer the question or we're trying to hide some big secret. That's not it. We just have to consider it. There's a long history of people jumping in forums and looking yeah. up professional bodybuilders' stacks and yeah. copying it and seriously hurting themselves. An easy way to put it is what will work for me might not work for him and what works for him might not work for the next guy and so on down the track. So I think 
having the open conversation and the ability to say steroids are here, steroids are real, they are fucking everywhere, yeah. but we are not going to put ourselves in the position or you you in the position where you hear what we're taking and try to copy that or imitate it. And it won't make you like us either. No. There's no promises with this. There's no promises at all. Um, but I think that's been good, man. I think uh, we got out what we wanted to. Um, and one message I will fucking leave you with is if you decide to take performance enhancing drugs, don't compete in a fucking natural federation. Just be honest. No one cares. Just be honest. And yes, PEDs, it's not just testosterone and all those real popular ones. Psalms. Psalms. Or, and the a million other little things that people are coming up with every other day and making new compounds of, okay? It's, if it enhances your performance, it's a performance enhancing drug. <laughs> and motherfuckers, being natty is not a badge to be worn with honor. I don't fucking think. <laughs> I love being juicy. Choose your lane and stay the fuck in it. It's that simple. That's it. But until fucking next time, stay strong. Go to the fucking gym, Tyrone. Oh, that's right. That's what they're saying, isn't it? Fuck. Pretty good.